Cactus's topography did bear marginal resemblance to that of the Goldfield and Tonopah areas. However, without geological evidence of rich ore, the task of attracting investors to develop a claim was very difficult. The challenge required a primitive form of advertising. You see piles like this all over the West around these little prospect holes, and we kind of informally refer to them as liars piles. He picks out the best looking stuff and he develops an eye for what's good and he piles it to the side of the, the prospect so when he brings somebody in he can say this is what I've got here this is my stuff and you look at it and you, you know you see a nice pile of mineral and it, maybe it only represents a tiny portion of what came out of the vein but it's a good way of, of uh, seeing what the best mineral is in the area. It's a selling tool, it's the promotional pile for the prospector. It's what he's basing his hopes on. Attempts to sell the property were also made in a joint effort. The neighbors were convinced that they were all mining along one large vein of gold and silver that deserved the attention of large-scale investments. There is mineral indication here. There's nice vein structures. Uh, if you go up on the dumps, you can find uh, galenas, fowlerite, uh, copper sulfides, and they do contain precious metals. The mine was profitable right towards the last. Dad made, I believe, two trips to the smelter out of Salt Lake City. Uh, he took several tons of ore and he cleared $50 a trip. And I believe he made two trips before he had to move off that property. Two years before Merritt Bailey passed away, he received a final letter from the Refining, Mining and Smelting Company. The letter firmly stated that the company had no intention of investing in the mine or sending anyone to inspect it in the near future. It wasn't a scam. These people honestly thought they had something. They were trying to bring people in, but they weren't trying to work you. And people like Nair and Bailey probably were more serious. They, they actually thought they had something. Unfortunately, the Cactus Range never produced the amount of gold and silver that the miners had dreamed of. The total sum of ore shipped from the Cactus Range area in 32 years could be produced from a single Tonopah or Goldfield mine in one day during the boom years. With no investors to bring the necessary equipment to the area, the metals could not be recovered at a rate that would yield life-changing profits. There is no real evidence of a major ore body here. What you've got up there is a lot of smoke but no real fire. And an engineer would look at that and he'd say, well, there's nothing shown, there's nothing here that warrants my bringing a company in to put money in this. Well, that was why Mother would get so upset, because he was still paying the taxes on that mine. That was one dad, one thing Dad stood firm on. That mine was going to pay off someday. I think that what kept everyone going uh, to stay there, the Nears, Near and the Baileys, is the fact that they felt they were close to a bonanza, that they were willing to sacrifice in order to uh, strike it rich. And I, I do think that's what the whole thing was about. During World War II, the Department of Defense annexed three million acres in central Nevada to train fighter pilots. For safety and security reasons, access was restricted. But the mining operations and the homes remained protected. I think the preservation work by the government out here is, is uh, very good. They're to be commended. You know, the people think of a bombing range as a destructive place, but within this range, more things are being preserved than they are on the public lands outside the range. Because they've got the area closed. People, you know, the general public sometimes is destructive, not all the time, but they can be. There are things left here, and looking specifically at the mining, there are mining artifacts and things lying here that you won't find in many other places in the state because they've all been packed off and put in people's backyards. The uh, work of taking place out at Cactus and its outlaying camps is very, very beneficial as for historians and for our future even. As a historian, I am really impressed and pleased that that is taking place. The petroglyphs, the remains of the old mining camps at almost pristine condition other than uh, the natural collapsing and whatnot from age and all, but as long as it can be kept in a pristine condition as it is, I'm all for it and think they're doing an excellent job. 
In 2004, Nellis Air Force Base granted access to both the Thompson and Fuchs families to visit their mines. I can't even believe what's still in there because I thought it would all be collapsed. Jackie Elder Thompson returned to her father's cabin for the first time in more than 60 years. This was a little porch here, and we had a bed out here when we had company. That's th what they got. And uh, looking through the window here, I, you can see some remnants of it. There was a built-in table and benches, and over in that corner, uh, right in there, you can see the stovepipe. It isn't the corner, the sidewall. And then the amazing part to me, I can't even believe this, the bunk beds are intact and the springs are still there. That really is amazing. Now is that the bed that you all four had to sleep on while you were snowed in? The uh, bottom bed ordinarily when we were out here was occupied by my parents and my sister and I used the upper bunk. But the year we were snowed out, it was so cold, we took all the bedding from both beds and we wore all our clothes and the four of us slept in the bottom bunk to keep warm. And of course the stove was right there and uh, dad would feed it for a while with, we started out to have wood. When we used all the wood up, well then he went out and chopped Joshua trees that you see all over the place. And they are terrible fuel because they smoke, they moan and they don't give off much heat. <laughs> but uh, it did take some chill off. And we had a table that was over in here, a little freestanding table, and Dad put a glass of water on it, and one night that water froze. It was that cold to give you an idea inside of the cabin. Jackie's father made his final visit to his mine, the Thompson Claim, in 1956. Unfortunately, his dream was never fulfilled. My father was very upset that he had to leave because he felt he was just on the edge of a really good vein. The gold was in quartz and he had good quartz showing up. Uh, and he was very sorry that he had to leave because he did feel that there was money there to be had. The Golden Chariot Mine, now the Fuchs Nuclear Mine, is patented mining land and is still managed by the family today. The only thing my father left, really, for us were, were the mines. They, he deeded them to my brother Joe and Carl in trust for the whole family. My only real recollection of the mines was when I, my mother and father would argue. And mother kept saying, he shouldn't pay the taxes on the mine. He should be paying off his best friends the loan he had from Mike. And Dad always insisted he had to pay the taxes on that mine because someday it was going to pay off. I look at it now with all the casinos and everything, and it was a gambling, an addiction that they had that, that just always drove them a little bit further, a little bit further. I feel that my mother was very relieved. I think that she loved California, and uh, I think she always pictured going back to California, which we did not do. But I think she was relieved to get out of the Cactus Range. It was tough for her, too. Did these miners exhaust all that the Cactus Range had to offer, or were they looking in the wrong places? As far as there still being gold and silver to be found and discovered in the Cactus Range, I believe there could be. It's been proven more than one time here in central Nevada that uh, what appears to be a dead mining camp or district turns out not to be so dead. The miners who settled in the Cactus Range kept the American Western spirit alive by seeking out a better life for themselves and their families in an unfamiliar land. The hopes and convictions they were driven by embody the core of American ideals and still inspire people today. While the riches they so desperately searched for were never found, a fondness for the Cactus Range will always be with them. Does it bring back a lot of memories? Being it brings back a whole lot of memories and I'm just uh, very pleased I had a chance to come and see it and 
to see that the countryside hasn't changed one bit. The house did, but uh, the rocks, the trees, the mountains, they're the same. Uh,